Something I've noticed over the past few years of covering MMOs is that whenever a new MMO announces what business model they're going to use, there's always a large group of people who are unhappy and disagree with the decision. This happens for every type of business model, from free to play, subscription and buy to play. At this point it's clear that as an MMO dev, you can't please everyone. In this video I want to go a little more in depth into each of the common business models we see in MMOs and talk about the pros and cons for each of them from a general point of view. Or also discussing how this choice actually has a big impact on game design. First off, let's discuss what's certainly the most popular business model used by MMOs these days, free to play. The free to play model was initially made popular by the MMO industry, more specifically Nexon, the people in charge of MapleStory. Throughout the early 2000s to late 2000s, Nexon showed that the free to play model was actually more profitable than the buy to play and subscription business models. Two big reasons for this was that having no paywall as a barrier to entry, trying a game was much more accessible when compared to the competition, who primarily focused on buy-to-play and sub-fee games at the time, and as a result, games that adopted this approach were able to hone in on the more casual gaming audience, an audience that fee-to-pay games had always struggled to tap into. Back in the mid-2000s, there wasn't really a lot of free-to-play games around either, which was also a massive selling point in getting people to try out one of these games. Eventually, other MMO devs and publishers saw how successful free-to-play was proving to be and decided to try out for themselves. For some, the transition to free to play resulted in massive population boosts for struggling games, and profits sometimes being doubled or even triple what they were prior. Since then, the free to play model has gone from strength to strength, and we're now in a situation where the majority of online multiplayer games coming out nowadays are free to play. So at this point a lot of you are probably thinking, well, what's the problem? Free to play makes the most money, it doesn't cost you anything to try, it's easy to get your friends into, everyone wins, right? Well, not exactly. The problem from a game design point of view is that when developers decide to make a free to play game, they're incentivized to, to create problems and frustrating in game systems, so a solution for that problem can then be sold to players via the cash shop. This is how most free to play games make their money. Common examples of this in MMOs are things such as making a game very grindy, so XP boosts can be sold on the cash shop, limiting inventory space to sell you more, having very few in game obtainable cosmetics, so to make your character look cool you need to buy outfits off the cash shop, reward chests with unique items dropping in game that can only be unlocked via keys bought on the cash shop, and locking gear progression behind RNG upgrade systems only to sell higher upgrade rates behind some kind of microtransaction. These are all common things that you'll find in free to play MMOs, and as time's gone on more of these games are being dubbed as pay to win by the gaming community, with some of them requiring up to thousands of dollars of investment to have any kind of relevant end game character in. The problem that I personally have with the majority of free to play MMOs is that if I want to see everything the game has to offer and have a similar experience to that of a sub fee MMO, I'll end up spending way more money in the long run than that of a subscription MMO. I see these games as being free to try, but to really play and enjoy them it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. With that being said, there's a lot of non MMOs that have very fair free to play models that don't create problems to sell solutions. I think MOBAs such as League of Legends, Dota 2, Smite and Heroes of the Storm have proven that free to play is the best choice for that genre, with players being able to purchase optional skins for each character and having the choice to either permanently unlock characters through grind or pay to unlock them in addition to the free hero rotation of the week. Other games that also do a good job with the free to play model include Path of Exile, Fortnite's Battle Royale, Warframe and Team Fortress 2. I personally I personally think the free to play model works best for the consumer when the things being sold for real money don't feel like mandatory purchases you need to make to be competitive, and the things being sold can also be obtained in game via a reasonable grind. For MMOs, I think free to play can either completely ruin a game's potential or be the only viable option depending on how ambitious that MMO is. For generic WoW clones and half assed eastern asset flips that bring nothing new to the genre, the only way people will even try those games is 
as if they're free to play, but for high budget AAA MMOs with amazing combat, good graphics and innovative mechanics, I think the free to play model would probably be the worst option to go with right now, considering the market's in a state where there's very few big MMOs coming out nowadays, people are hungry for a good AAA MMO that's not World of Warcraft, and as a result any big release will have thousands of people willing to pay money to try it out on day one. If that game is then negatively critiqued due to game design choices that come as a result of its free to play business model, people aren't going to stick around for long and the growth of the game will be on a downward spiral almost immediately. One MMO that I personally believe has been impacted very negatively as a result of its business model is Black Desert Online. This is a Korean MMORPG that's been designed to be free to play from day one. The game has the best combat in the genre, the best graphics, a massive open world, a fantastic node and life skill system, and many immersive little pieces of attention to detail that make it stand out more than any other game in the genre. Almost all of the massive problems this game has are a result of its business model and the design choices that come with that. For example, the game has absolutely no visual progression as your character gets stronger. This will never change because they sell $30 to $40 outfits on the cash shop. The game has one of the most stressful, unintuitive and unfair RNG progression systems I've ever seen in an MMO. This will never be fixed because they sell items on the cash shop to make this process less painful. The game has an infinite grind. This will never change because they sell so many items to make said grind more efficient. And there's no challenging PvE content or traditional dungeons. This will never change because progression is fundamentally different from other MMOs. Instead of a boss dropping a piece of gear that you can equip without doing anything to it, they drop gear that you need to suffer through their exploitive enhancement system first before it's even remotely useful. From a player point of view, one of the most frustrating things about free to play MMOs is knowing that whenever a game has a fundamental issue limiting its potential, such as grind, RNG, pay to win, and classes being overpowered, the devs have to decide whether or not fixing those issues would result in a loss of revenue. Something many free to play MMOs intentionally do is keep certain classes overpowered for a few months at a time to cash in on players re-rolling to the new flavour of the month and needing to repurchase inventory and cosmetics for the new class. Personally, I think the free to play business model for MMORPGs is probably the most effective at making as much money as possible in the short term, but eventually once the hype for these games die down, they bleed players and end up being funded by a very small number of whales who continue to play. Using the example of Black Desert, I think if they designed that game from day one to be a non pay to win subscription MMO, it would be a completely different game today, possibly getting into the millions of subscribers range with much more steady profits over a long period of time. Unfortunately, MMOs cost a lot of money to make, and investors usually want a quick return on their investment with low risk, so it's understandable why the free to play model is so appealing. Just to summarise the free to play part of this video, let's quickly mention the pros and the cons. Free to play games are generally easy to try out and convince friends to play, usually at least a few hours of free fun before you feel your wallet being tugged at. From an investment point of view is the safest option to get a return, very profitable for developers short term. The term free to play makes a game more easily marketable. You don't feel pressured to play the game to get your money's worth like you do a sub fee MMO. Usually these games lack visual progression and in-game obtainable cosmetics, they're usually quite grindy, usually they have a large element of RNG progression, developers are slow to make balancing changes to incentivize re-rolls, big chunks of new content that get added are usually made to the cash shop, Usually these games are pay to win and heavy pay for convenience, meaning to enjoy the game you actually spend more than you would a sub fee game. After a while free to play MMOs tend to have really low player populations due to people in the west hating pay to win games. Most of the time it's hard for new and free to play players to catch up and be competitive. Usually it ends up feeling pointless investing into these games long term due to declining player base and not knowing how long the game will be around for before it's shut down.
Next, let's discuss the buy-to-play business model for MMOs. Currently, the best examples of games that use this model are Guild Wars 2 and The Elder Scrolls Online. Both of these games have had long-term success and charge players for expansions once every one to two years. Similar to the free-to-play model, buy-to-play games also have cash shops, but generally they tend to only sell things that fall into the cosmetic and pay-for-convenience category, rather than straight-up pay-to-win. I'm sure in the comments some of you will most likely mention that Black Desert is actually a buy-to-play game in the West. Whilst that's true, it's not fundamentally designed to be buy-to-play, as it's a free-to-play game in all other regions, so it doesn't really count. I think buy-to-play as an MMO business model has proven to be quite successful in the West as a good middle ground between free-to-play and sub-fee. It allows developers to give their investors a quick return on investment, whilst not compromising the integrity of the game too much. Players don't feel forced to log in every day to get their money's worth, and these games have the potential to attract a very healthy long-term population due to people not quitting over pay-to-win elements and frustrating progression systems. When it comes to the impact on game design that buy to play has, generally there's more of an effect on cosmetics and convenience than fundamental systems such as the grind, RNG and progression that the free to play impact has. For example, limiting bag and storage space to sell players more is fairly common in buy to play games, as well as limiting how cool end game cosmetics are to sell more detailed and impressive stuff on the cash shop. Unlike with free to play however, buy to play games do still have a decent level of vision Visual progression, it's just that you'll most likely find the coolest outfits on the cash shop. When it comes to new content additions, buy to play MMOs typically get them in large chunks, with the primary money maker being the sale of expansions. In terms of patches, these games usually see new additions to story, balancing, and quality of life changes, but nothing overly substantial outside of expansions, which at times can leave players feeling like they're in a content drought. Now for the pros and cons of buy to play. Players don't feel full forced to log in to get their money's worth. Generally, games using this model aren't pay to win, only selling cosmetics and convenience. They tend to suffer less from grind, RNG, and tedious progression systems than free to play MMOs, as the incentive to design the game that way is lessened due to the focus being on making expansions that they can sell instead. Buy to play MMOs usually have a good chance of gaining and maintaining a good loyal player base. Devs can easily supplement their income with cosmetics between expansions, and investors get a quick return on investment when the game launches. When it comes to the cons, you'll probably still want to buy things such as additional bag space and storage. Sometimes things get added to these games that are so convenient that you feel compelled to buy it. Usually there's a lack of substantial content in between expansions. The coolest cosmetics and outfits are usually found on the cash shop. It can be hard to get players to spend $40 to return to the game with a new expansion. If a buy to play game doesn't have a large population, it can struggle to get players to spend enough money money to support the game in between expansions. It's easy for buy to play games to get into a situation where the cost of developing new content is more than what they'd get back in sales. And as a result of that, it can be tempting for devs to add pay to win elements or extreme pay for convenience to stay afloat. Overall, I think the buy to play business model is usually quite a fair one, however it is one of the most difficult models to get working from a financial point of view. It very much relies on a certain threshold of players spending money on microtransactions between expansion releases to stay afloat, and there's always the risk of extreme pay for convenience or pay to win being added if the game's not performing well. I think ESO and Guild Wars 2 have done buy to play very well, however other than those two I can't think of many MMOs that have really succeeded in making it work. Finally, let's talk about subscription MMOs. Subfee is the business model that's been around for the longest in the MMO genre and was used by games such as EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot, World of Warcraft, Lord of the Rings Online, Aeon, Final Fantasy XIV, RuneScape, Age of Conan, and many more that I don't care to list. Whilst a lot of the MMOs mentioned have either died or transitioned to free to play, three of those games are still highly successful using the subfee model, World of Warcraft, RuneScape, and Final Fantasy XIV. 
screen. The thing I like about the subscription model is that it allows the developers to design a full game without creating any issues that the players need to spend money to fix. The very nature of a sub-fee MMO incentivizes devs to make a game that's as interesting as possible for as long as possible to keep people playing over a long period of time. That's how they make their money. A sub-fee MMO is very much a long-term business strategy in contrast to free-to-play MMOs which are more short-term. The biggest hurdle sub-fee MMOs seem to face is being able to provide enough content to keep players subscribed. Theme park MMOs such as Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft seem to struggle with this the most, as between patches they see massive drop-offs in player numbers once people have seen all the new content. For sandbox MMOs with long-term progression such as RuneScape, it's much easier to maintain players due to most content in the game being designed to be relevant for long periods of time and not be so reliant on massive content updates but smaller weekly updates instead. Ashes of Creation is another upcoming sandbox MMORPG that's also going with the sub-fee model. Like RuneScape and unlike WoW and Final Fantasy XIV, you'll only need to buy a sub and not pay for any expansions, which I personally I personally think is the most consumer friendly option to go with provided there's enough content to justify the sub cost. One of the most negative impacts the sub-fee model can have on game design can be seen in World of Warcraft's newest expansions, where the devs keep adding more and more RNG to the game's gear progression to make up for a lack of interesting content in hopes of keeping people chasing best-in-slot optimal stats for as long as possible. I think for a sub-fee MMO to be successful, it does need to have some form of grind. Things to work towards long-term, such as a cosmetic collection grind, mount grind, progression grind, life skill grind, or PvP grinds. The important thing for this to work is that there's a variety of different things to work towards so that players don't get burnt out all doing the same thing all of the time, which is something that WoW seems to struggle a lot with nowadays. Now for the pros and cons of the subscription model in MMOs. There's no excuse for devs to add any pay to win or any pay to convenience in the game. All cosmetics, items and achievements can be gained through gameplay. Sub fee is a long term business strategy so games that opt for this route intend to be providing content for many years to come. For the game to survive, devs need to make content that constantly keeps the game interesting and fun. Despite the monthly cost, you'll most likely spend less on a sub fee MMO to experience the full game than a free to play MMO. It's a tried and true business model and works for three of the top MMOs right now, even in a time where free-to-play is such a huge thing, and players have more power in sub-fee MMOs than free-to-play or buy-to-play. If the developer pisses off the player base or doesn't listen to feedback, they'll lose subscribers and lose money. They almost have no choice but to listen to feedback if they want to be successful. As for the cons, you can feel forced to log in to get your money's worth. It can be hard to get your friends to commit to these games monthly. Sometimes these games also charge for expansions on top of the sub-fee, which can feel like a real sting to the wallet. In theme park sub fee MMOs, you often encounter content droughts and it feels like paying monthly isn't worth it. When designing content to keep players subbed, devs can often cross the line into designing an online Skinner box or loot treadmill that players tend to eventually get sick of. Overall, for devs that just want to make the best MMORPG they possibly can, I think subscription fee is the best choice, as it provides stable long-term income and forces them to keep making regular interesting content to be successful whilst also avoiding the issue of creating problems to sell a cash shop solution which is seen in the free to play model. That being said, I think sub fee would be a disaster for MMOs that aren't up to standard or offer anything new to the genre as people simply wouldn't play them for anything longer than a month. To summarise this video, the best business model for MMOs depends a lot on the type of MMO, whether it be sandbox or theme park, the quality of the game and how reliant the developers are on giving their investors a quick return on investment. From a consumer point of view, I think free to play with a cosmetic only cash shop is one of the best options we can hope for, providing the devs don't later add convenience garbage later on. I think for ambitious MMOs that want long term success, the sub fee route has proven to be the most sustainable long term without compromising the integrity of the game too much. Obviously everything I spoke about in this video was fairly general and there's been MMOs that have done a good job with each type of business model that we've talked about. I mostly just wanted to make this video to talk about how the business model devs choose to pursue when making a game has a fundamental impact on how a game is designed going forward and also ask you guys what business
business model you prefer the most in MMOs? I'll have a straw poll linked in the description below where you can pick an answer. Also, feel free to justify your opinions in the comments below. But that's it for this video, guys. If you want to discuss any of the topics or games covered on this channel, or just chat to like-minded gamers, then feel free to join my Discord, which can be found in the description. And consider subscribing if you enjoy discussion content such as this. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you again really soon.